Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, we will talk about memory address decoding. Um, we may able to do everything in one video, or I might have to split it into two if we uh, take more time than expected. Um, but nonetheless, so in memory address decoding, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a memory system that's made out of uh, multiple chips and uh, the connections of these chips all together. So typically when you have a memory, it's not really built like a it's custom made. Um, usually you use the uh, building blocks for those uh, systems. And the building blocks are basically the chips that you can use to construct either deeper address space or a wider output. Um, you need to understand the address range for your memory in the system. Um, where does the memory start? Where does it end? At what address basically does it start? At what address does it end? Uh, you need to understand how the address bits are actually mapped to the address bits of the chips. Um, you need to understand how to do the decoding logic for the chips uh, or for the addresses so you can construct like a chip select signal for these chips. So let's get started. Um, address bits. So this is actually the easiest of all in here. Um, basically, when you talk about address bits, you're asking yourself, how many bits do I need to be able to access every location in my memory system? And the location are typically uh, have different granularity. Sometimes you can access each individual byte, and sometimes you access individual words, which are four bytes, and so on. But nonetheless, so let's say we have in the first example, um, so here it says like accessible location in memory, uh, which means, uh, again, some chips are byte accessible and some of them are word accessible, accessible. So assume that you have a one kilobyte memory um, that is byte accessible. That means each location is holding one byte and I'm going to have to access each of them individually. In that case, I will need to use 10 bits because 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. Well, that's 1K. So I need 10 bits for that. On the other hand, if I have a memory system that is word accessible, meaning I, each location is holding four bytes and I can only select one location at a time, obviously that one kilobyte chip now is only 256 addresses. Each address is holding four or is, is holding um, uh, four bytes a word basically. So in that case, I need only eight bits because two to the power of eight will give me 256 uh, number, right? So I need only eight bits. So as you can see, if I have deeper space, like uh, if, if my memory is, it, uh, it has 1,028, 1,024 locations, I need 10 bits. If the memory has 256 locations, I need eight bits and so on. So let's uh, just kind of draw the memory that is one kilobyte using one kilobyte chip. So basically I just have one chip and all I have to do is to show like, how does that look like? Essentially I have one chip here, pardon my drawing a little bit. Um, so I can annotate this as 1024 by eight chip which means the outputs of the chip, I have eight bits, eight bit data, or you can write it as D. Um, seven down to zero. And then I have my address bits here going into my address inputs. This is my A. We said we need 10 bits for this. So this is A nine down to zero. Typically there is also a chip enable or chip select, which we will talk about in a little bit. Nonetheless, if you have a 1024 by eight chip, you need 10 address bits to access individual locations, to access each of these 1024 locations in the chip. And you have eight data bits coming out of the chip because the chip has um, eight bits out uh, or eight output uh, data. Now let's assume that we're actually, like I said, we're not using uh, the 1024 by eight chip. Let's say we are using the 
um, the 256 by 32. So in that case, going to erase those. I guess I could have started with a new slide, but this is all right. So in, this, in that case, I will have 256 times 32. This is a different example. Is um, it's we're still we're still using a one kilobyte chip, but in this chip, the arrangement is 256 by 32. So obviously, the output here I have um, D31 down to zero. This is my 32 bits. And then the address bits here are coming in. For 256, I need 8 bits. So I need 8 bits, and that's A7 down to 0. And again, there is a select line or chip enable, usually, which we'll talk about later. And this is my 256 by 32 chip, which is a 1 kilobyte chip. Just the arrangement is a little bit different. All right, this brings me to my next uh, point, actually. Well, how big is a chip? How do you measure the size of the chip of memory? The answer is, uh, it's very simple. It's the number of locations time the number of bytes in that location. So if I have a 1,024 addresses, each address is holding one byte, that's a one kilobyte chip. If I have 1,024 addresses, each holding four bytes, that's a four kilobyte chip. If I have 2048 addresses, each one holding one byte, that's a two kilobyte chip, and so on. So I think that's actually pretty straightforward. You just multiply the number of addresses with the size of each address or the amount of data each address holds. That will give you the size of the chip. Now, going to the address bits, as you saw in the previous example, um, we had these bits here like a7 down to zero well, well where are these bits coming from they typically come from the system bus or the system address bus or some sort of bus that has the address bits on it and we're siphoning or we're listening to in this case in particular we're listening to the first eight bits um well again we'll we'll cover that in a minute in more details but uh, when we talk about address bits we're talking about the system address bits, like the system needs to have enough bits that will cover what I need when I compose my memory. And what do I need? I need enough address bits to access every location in my chip or chips. And I need enough bits to cover my chip select or some other logic. Sometimes you have multiple chips and you need to select one of the chips. Sometimes you have, uh, you need to do an offset because the, the, for example, in again, in this particular instant where we had the chip producing 32 bits, that's four bytes. Well, what if I want one byte out of the four or I have, uh, so then now I need to select one out of four. So I might, I must use a mux and then how am I gonna collect, connect, uh, control the mux? Well, I use some of these bits. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a rambling, but all I'm trying to say is that the address bits are usually needed to cover what I need, or the, the addresses are needed to cover what I have in the system. So I need to be able to select individual addresses and I need to select any logic that has um, to do with the chip select. And I need, if needed, uh, bits to do the byte offset. You can use these two formulas if you like. So if you're composing memory from multiple chips, the number of address bits that you use for the address is log two of the address size. So again, if we go back to the example we did, in this case, uh, we have 256 locations or 256 addresses, log two of 256 is equal to eight. Um, if you have multiple chips, let's say you have two chips, you need to select one of these two. Uh, log two of two is just one, so you need one extra bit to select one of two chips. So let's do this example to kind of show you um, what I'm uh, talking about here. So let's do two kilobyte using one kilobyte chip. So we need to construct a, mem sorry, a memory system that is a two kilobyte system using one kilobyte chips. And I'm going to assume it's 1024 by eight. So in this case, 
if each chip is one kilobyte, that means I need two chips. So I'm going to draw the first one here, and then the second one here. And like we said, each one of these is actually producing eight bits. So up D, seven down to zero. This one is eight bits, D, seven down to zero. And the first chip is 1024 by eight. The second one is also 1024 by eight. Now, um, because it's 1024, or 10, it has 1024 addresses, I'm going to need um, 10 bits again, A9 down to zero. And this is shared between these two chips. They both receive that on their address input. And now if you look at this, you see that I can't really have two chips enabled at the same time every time I put an address on the address bus, right? Um, eventually, actually, just to be more complete, those data, um, those data bits are actually going to go on a data bus that is also 8 bits. So this is an 8-bit data bus. So only one chip should be enabled at a given time. Well, I have to select which one do I need. Well, for that case, I'm going to have to use one more bit for here. And you can do, for example, um, like let's just say, actually, before I show you the inverter here, so this will be A10. So A10 is going to select whether I'm using the first chip or the second chip, and you can invert it, right? So when A0, when A10 is zero, the first chip is going to be enabled, and when A10 is one, the second chip chip will be enabled, and we call these inputs the chip select or the chip enable, either, either CE or CS. And this is how I construct a two kilobyte memory system using one kilobyte chip. Okay, uh, I think this might be a good place to uh, pause here and then maybe do something else on the next video. Um, but in this one, we were, uh, we talked about, we started with the memory address decoding and we said we have a few things to cover before we do the whole thing. We talked about the address bits, the size of the memory system, the number of the data bits on the output. And in the next video, we'll pick it up and we'll cover some more topics and we'll have more examples. Thank you for watching.